Hello. Today I'm going to look at some of the ways in which I preserve our harvest. I'm Niz Zorab and this is By the Farm. I grow a lot of winter vegetables, things like carrots and parsnips, both of which can store perfectly well in the ground uh, where we live here in Monmouthshire. And at the moment, uh, our carrots are still <laughs> very tiny. There are some bigger ones uh, and they will quietly grow on uh, during the rest of the autumn. They'll sit in the ground during the winter and I'll just harvest them as I need them. And likewise with the parsnips, uh, they are better to be left in the ground because once the frost gets them, turns those carbohydrates into sugars and makes them beautifully sweet. Other foods that are great for sitting in the ground during the winter include swedes, uh, leeks like these and celeriac. Squashes and pumpkins uh, need to be taken inside. Um, and I leave these to cure uh, in an airy place. So in my greenhouse with all the uh, windows open and then uh, on the kitchen table. And they will form a hard skin, um, hard enough that if you press with your thumbnail, you're not going to make a dent in it. Things like the cheeky curry squash. Uh, this has been cured, uh, but this will sit on my work surface because this is one uh, that I'm going to be eating soon. And then they will keep uh, the whole winter right through to next year uh, in, a, in an unheated room uh, that's frost free. Um, so somewhere like a spare bedroom is ideal. And another food that needs to be uh, cured or, or not left outside uh, are things like onions and uh, shallots. So I've left these ones out <laughs> and they're starting to regrow. So I might actually use some of these to replant uh, ready for next year uh, but onions uh, as I showed you earlier in the year uh, I take in uh, under cover so they're out of the rain um, and I store them uh, like this to dry out so the skins dry out um, unlike this one uh, so the skins dry out um, and then when you peel back you've got the, the lovely onion that you can use so once my onions uh, have dried sufficiently on the outside, uh, I then string them. Uh, I have a video showing you exactly how I do that, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now, I'd left this one out in the rain, so I'm gonna take this in uh, and use it uh, immediately. Uh, there's a few of them. I'm going to be making some stew today, uh, using up the onions that I've left out in the rain. The vast majority of my summer harvests get frozen. Uh, that's everything from sweet corn, uh, which I cook and then cut off the cob uh, and freeze the individual kernels, to tomatoes, which I either freeze whole if they're cherry tomatoes or cut into quarters and halves if they're larger, onion leaves, uh, which I like to chop, and then I've got them here for use in the winter. And I have several freezers full of food and in a couple of weeks time I'll show you how I prepare my freezer uh, for winter. And then here in the kitchen during the late summer uh, and early autumn it's a hive of activity uh, getting things prepared uh, for storage for autumn and winter. Uh, so I have quite a lot of squashes uh, like this patty pan which is a summer squash but will sit quite happily uh, for a couple of months as long as uh, the environment isn't too damp. Things like pears uh, get stored in our fridge uh, or cooked and frozen. And if you want to tell uh, if a pear is ready to be picked, uh, it will be hanging from a branch, much like this. And you just uh, put the palm of your hand underneath it and lift it gently. And when it gets to horizontal position, if it comes away, uh, it is ready to be picked and to be stored. And if you store pears uh, above freezing, but below about three degrees, um, and this is uh, in Celsius, uh, <laughs> they will store for many months. Um, it just puts them into stasis 
Um, so we keep ours in the salad drawer in the fridge. Uh, they will sit there for uh, four or five months. Uh, as long as they're not damaged and bruised, they'll be fine. And we just take out uh, one or two a week uh, and they will sit uh, and take a week or two to ripen and then they're ready to eat. It's really nice to be able to have uh, homegrown fresh fruit uh, right through the winter. I make jams and preserves. Uh, this is a strawberry jam uh, from this year. I've actually still got one jar of strawberry jam from last year. Not quite sure how I missed that. Honey we keep uh, either on the cone in a plastic tub uh, or in jars. Um, honey sterile. It doesn't carry uh, any nasties in it so that can store nicely. If you're enjoying this video please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment and if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing to the channel. You can do pickles. Uh, we don't actually like pickled food in, <laughs> in this house so we don't do them uh, but I do make lots of chutneys and what I have just started doing uh, is um, bottling our food or canning it depending on whether you're in the UK or, uh, or elsewhere uh, and that's a method uh, of cooking your food and then preserving it uh, in a jar uh, with a sealed lid um, that has been heat treated that preserves it and also uh, kills off any nasties like botulism um, and keeps your food safe. So there are two methods uh, for canning or bottling. One method is uh, water bath canning where you put your jars uh, into a large pan, cover them with water. Uh, and bring them up to a, a very gentle rolling boil for the required period. Uh, that will do it. And the other method uh, is pressure canning. And I have uh, invested in a pressure canner. I have been really reluctant uh, to try canning as a preserving method uh, this year, having filled four freezers um, and thinking that I probably need a fifth. Um, I'm thinking maybe I will do some canning, get more of our food uh, stored this way, which will mean we don't need to buy another freezer uh, to, and still have the same amount of food preserved. So I will be making a canning for a beginner uh, video and that won't be an instructional video, that will be showing you uh, how I get on uh, as I'm learning that process because uh, I thought it might be interesting for the people who don't can who, or who are absolute beginners uh, to see how I've got on. Um, I will leave uh, the high-tech instructional videos to A, uh, when I know more about it, and B, uh, to people who have been canning uh, for many years and have a vast amount of experience in doing that. But what I can say uh, is the canning that I've done so far using the water bath method has been great. Uh, the food toast lovely uh, and I'm really excited to learn some more about that and some things I dehydrate and these are marigold petals uh, which I use in things like salads uh, and in custards rosemary and other woody herbs uh, I happily dehydrate and I also dehydrate things like beans uh, so here's a Greek gigantes that I picked two days ago uh, when they're fully dehydrated they go down to little size like this and they'll then quite happily store in a jar uh, in the cupboard over winter and when I want to use them I soak them uh, overnight uh, and then cook them thoroughly. For dehydrating things like these beans uh, I can actually just leave them on the kitchen work surface uh, or on a shelf and they will de dehydrate uh, over a, a couple of weeks or so. Uh, you could also uh, buy a dehydrator which is like uh, an electric fan that just warms the air enough to uh, help the uh, liquids evaporate out of the food or you can use your oven. Uh, I know some ovens have a dehydrating uh, setting on them. Uh, I haven't seen any in the UK with that um, but I know some in America do uh, but what you need to do is put your uh, oven on at its very very lowest heat. Um, leave the door open uh, and it will help uh, your food dehydrate fairly quickly. So I haven't gone into any huge detail uh, about these methods. Uh, I will look at all of these individually uh, over the coming weeks.